that it's now been 18 years, coming on to 18 years since the first edition of uh, the Crest of the Peacock came out. Now, I'm now in the process of adding and changing for the third edition. And one of the sort of points that was made fairly early on when the, when the book came out was that it contained a lot of politics and very little mathematics. This was one of the sort of criticisms made of it. And so, that in part explains what is the title of the talk that I have taken, which is a politics of writing histories of non-Western mathematics. Now, one of the great uh, benefits, at least, that both my wife and I have got as a result of this book is being that it's given us an opportunity to travel to all sorts of different parts of the world. A lot of the areas outside North America and Europe. And the course of these travels have been able to interact and exchange ideas with a whole number of different groups of people. And one of the things that one notices is that as part of this contact, there are four questions that are quite frequently discussed by audiences, by individuals in a number of co countries and outside Europe or North America. I think the first question is why are non-Western contributions generally neglected in histories of math and science? Not just specifically mathematics but histories of science. A second question is, why is there such difficulty for new evidence on non-Western contributions to become accepted and then percolate into standard histories of science? The third question is, this is rather long, but I think I hope you, you, you bear with me what I am trying to say here. Why is there a tendency to assume that the holy grail of objectivity and balance has to be guarded jealously against biased opinion and special pleading on the part of non-Western scholars? And finally, the fourth question is, what explains the tendency to apply different standards of evidence when considering Western and non-Western contribution to scientific knowledge? The answers that one has tried to seek or in this are to an extent summarized by some of the following points. One is, there was a view which is now probably much less prevalent, particularly with some of the more recent texts and books that have been written, that mathematics is essentially a European creation. A creation that arose from Greece and then it was taken up after a considerable period of time by taken up by by <coughs> European the Europeans. Now, so this is a particular view that it op exists and this is a view that may partly provide an answer to the questions that are put. Secondly, as a part of this particular idea of it being a European creation, the contributions, of the, there have been omissions, omissions of contributions from other cultures. There have been appropriations from, that is, certain mathematical results or, the, or theories 
have been appropriated from the countries where they originated and then taken up as a European creation. And there have been also exclusions of particular things. 